Hello and welcome. Today we are going to learn how to scrape website titles and descriptions from URLs in Airtable. So we are going to use the data fetcher extension as well as Microlink, but we aren't going to need any code here. So Microlink can be used to scrape data such as titles and meta descriptions from any URL and the basic plan is free. So we are going to begin today in our Airtable base and we're going to create the title title and description table for ourselves. So up in the top left hand corner, we will retitle table one as websites forward slash URLs. Then you can select save nice and simple. Then we're going to go ahead and create a field called URL here in the first column. So here we will title this just by double clicking on that. You can change it. And from that drop down menu, we're also going to select URL. So that will pop up nice and simple if you search in that bar. Then we'll select save and we can paste in our URLs that we'd like to collect that data from. So once you have your URLs entered under your URL column, we're going to retitle this first one, title. Nice, and we do want to leave that as long text from the drop down menu. Then you can select save and for the following column, we're going to retitle this as description. Great. And again, from that drop down menu, we are looking for long text. You can also type that in there and select save. Now over to the left hand side, we do want to create a new grid view. So you'll see this grid in that left hand menu and you'll see a plus symbol here. If you select the plus symbol, we can now retitle this as needs info. Nice and simple, select create new view, then make sure you are under that new grid view and you can see that as this title will be highlighted, then we're going to go ahead and add a filter. So from this menu, just in the middle of it at the top bar. And for this filter, we want to add condition and read this as where URL and then from the drop down menu is not empty. And then we would like to add another condition and change this drop down menu to title. And then the following should read is empty. Once you've selected that, we're going to add a third condition and add that as and the description is empty as well. So that should now read where URL is not empty and title is empty and description is empty. Great. You can click off that and you can see that's now highlighted in green. So next up, we are going to have to install our data fetcher extension. So over to the right hand side, you'll see this extensions option. If you select that, you can then click on add an extension, that big blue button, and we are going to search for data fetcher up here in the search bar to the right hand corner that will pop up immediately and you can select add and then add extension here. You can either create a free data fetcher account or you can simply continue with Google. Now we can create our first request. So in order to import your data, select that big blue button again. So now we'll arrive to the following page and we would like to title this as fetch metadata. So up here where it says request one, remove that and add your title. So it should now read like this. Then for the application, we are going to search for microlink. It should appear really nice and simple. Now this time around, we don't need to add any authorization. So you can leave this as type none. However, if you do go over microlinks free plan limits, you can buy a microlink paid plan with the link in this video description or on our blog on our website. You can check that out there as well. And then you will actually have an API key. It's really simple to use that you can then link to your personal microlink account, but we don't need to worry about this right now. So for the end point, we're going to search for extract meta information from URLs and select save save and continue in the bottom right hand corner. Now you'll arrive onto the following page and this is where we have this URL option. We would like to go all the way over to the right hand side and click that plus button because we'd like to insert a reference to the values in our URL Airtable field. So click that plus button and then here the following will pop up. It immediately inputs the information that the table is websites and URLs. That is correct. 
and for the field we're going to select URL. Now automatically it says run for every record in view and it selects that needs info grid view. So this is all correct. Then you can see that those URLs that you have already inputted have been brought through here so you know that it's all right. Then you can select confirm. So the URL field should now contain a reference to the table. If it looks like this, this is really great. You can check that your output table and view reads as website URLs and needs info. And then we're going to select save and run in the bottom right hand corner. Select continue. Now we arrive to the response field mapping. So this is where you can decide which fields you'd like to have imported into your Airtable base. But we can also turn these on and off. So you can see this green toggle. You can just switch that off so that that doesn't bring that field into your Airtable base. But today we are actually going to select the filter all button up in the right hand corner to turn all of those off immediately. Then we're going to search for title and description. So they are actually already here so we can turn title on, but if you did want to search for them, you can use this find field and search for it like so. Switch the toggle on from gray to green, and then make sure that those are both being mapped to their existing fields. So you can check this like so. Then you'll select save and run in the bottom right hand corner. And as you can see, these requests are now running. Select show output table and you can close that over. Now you will arrive to the following screen and it looks like nothing has worked. So if you go over to the left hand side, you'll see that grid view option. And here it has brought through all of that information that we would like to see from these websites, the title and the description meta information. So it really is as simple as that to scrape website titles and descriptions from URLs using data fetcher and microlink. But we can actually go one step further than this. So at the moment, you would need to manually run the data fetcher request to import any updates to the website titles and descriptions. However, we can actually make this happen automatically and have this information being updated without us having to do a thing. So in order to do this, we do need to open up our extensions option again, as we need that data fetcher extension to pop open, which it happens automatically, then you can go into that request that you have already created with all of your settings there and simply scroll down. Now you will see this schedule option. You'll only see this if you have already upgraded to a paid data fetcher account. So if you haven't yet done that, I really recommend that you do because this allows you to schedule in requests without you having to lift a finger for all of the different Airtable tasks that you have. So once you have upgraded to a paid data fetcher account, you will now see this like so. Here we have the add API key button. If you select this, it will pop up and prompt you to open your Airtable account. So click that button and we'll immediately arrive to the Airtable overview. Here you can select generate API key. And if you scroll down, that API key will appear right here. Copy that API key over and come back to your Airtable base to paste it into this input box. Once you've done that, you can select save. Now you can see the schedule option has turned on automatically and you can choose how regularly you would like for this request to run so that anytime you put any information into your Airtable, it just updates automatically. So now we're going to select save in the bottom right hand corner and then we can close this window over. So today, hopefully you have learned how to scrape website titles and descriptions from URLs using Microlink. But if you do have any questions, you can always reach out to us here at datafetcher.com, where we also have a full length blog on this exact topic for you if you prefer to learn that way. Thank you so much for taking the time to learn today. I really hope you have a good one.